Okay, so we got the last Monday Night Raw heading into Extreme Rules. And how do we begin it with? Dance off between Jericho and Fandango. Summer Rae kind of faints an ankle injury, therefore leading to this typical Fandango Jericho beatdown. They're matching Extreme Rules. I look for Fandango to still get the victory. At this point in time, he's relatively undefeated when it comes to the actual in ring competition. Yeah, he's had a, a count out. That really doesn't count that much. It would make sense for Jericho to try to put him over again. <clears throat> uh, there was a match between the primetime players and tons of funk. Short match with the primetime players getting a, a, a cheap victory. All right, not bad. They've got no match going on at Extreme Rules. <clears throat> Kofi Kingston, Damian Sandow, decent match. If you haven't seen the Damian Sandow Rosa Mendez rap on YouTube, find it. If you're watching the whole Michael Cole show, the five, five minute and some of one, if you go to like five minutes into it, you'll see Damien Sandow's little counter. It's an amazing 30 seconds. And Kofi, of course, got the victory. Kofi is defending his, his U.S. title against Dean Ambrose. This is one of the three matches that I think is, inter that is really exciting when it comes to Extreme Rules. It would be unique to see Dean Ambrose win. However... He doesn't have that great of a singles record currently. That match should be very entertaining and very brutal. It'd be great to see Dean Ambrose walk out of there with a title. If he doesn't, you know, they're, they're still relatively undefeated as a, as a unit. I have to say relatively because I'll, I'll get to that later. <clears throat> Ryder took on Ryback. Let's be honest. If you think Ryder stood a chance, you haven't been watching wrestling in some time. And Tony Cesaro took on Orton again in a rematch of a match that they've had on a, on main event, which was a really, really fantastic match. And if you thought Cesaro won, you haven't been watching wrestling recently. RK by Randy Orton, 1-2-3. The Miz made his triumphant return, and he took on Heath Slater. So of course, he got the, the victory using the fake news, the, the figure four. And he's taking on Cody Rhodes at Extreme Rules. In the pre-show. Mmm. Cody Rhodes has been having amazing matches recently. And he's going to lose to The Miz on the pre-show. I don't, I don't get it. I don't. Cody Rhodes at this point in time should almost be getting close to breaking into the heavyweight championship setup. Let's be honest. Rhodes, Ziggler would be a fantastic feud. Two young guys, they could trade the title back and forth and it would work. It could be a very, very solid solid you know, contest. You could have Caitlyn, Secret Admirer, either be Dolph Ziggler, and since Cody Rhodes and Dolph Ziggler, or Cody Rhodes and Caitlyn have had a little bit of a, a thing going on, it would make a really great solid piece. Or it could be Cody Rhodes, Cody could turn to face, face Cody and Caitlyn, squaring off against a team of, you know, heel Ziggler and heel AJ would work and work really well. But it mentions since Dolph has a concussion, he's not going to defend his title. Which sucks, because I think those three guys, all former Money in the Bank winners, in a triple threat ladder match for the World Heavyweight Championship would have been a sick match. So instead, it is now a number one contender I quit match, which is interesting. Very interesting. <clears throat> and Biggie and Langston got to take on one of those two, depending on how the WWE Universe voted as they constantly push the app. I guess to the point now, they don't want me actually watching wrestling. <clears throat> They're either wrestling down in the background and I'm watching the app. Or I'm watching wrestling and listening to an interview on the app. So either they want me to skip watching their TV show and therefore not watch their commercials, or mute Michael Cole's, mute Michael Cole, Jerry Lawler, and JBL and listen to someone have an inane interview. I don't, I don't get it. I don't. So Langston took on Swagger. And of course, there ended up being the, the run in with Del Rio fighting Swagger. Their IQ match should be interesting. It should be. <clears throat> AJ took on Natalia. AJ's doing a good job with the whole I get beat to the point of being unconscious and then come out of nowhere and get a victory. This time she got a submissions victory using the Black Widow. It's kind of like an octopus stretch, just a little bit more intense on, on Natalia. Very impressive. Very impressive. You could have used the app for this match. 
because the Caitlyn and the Bella Twins were on commentary, and it was ridiculously inane batter. It was it was horrible. And you could easily have fit muted that, and you wouldn't have lost anything. <clears throat> I don't know if AJ's taken on Caitlyn for ex extreme roles for the Divas title. If not, it, I mean, it'd be great to see AJ win that and to see Biggie Langston get a title too. That would be you know, a dynasty holding all three belts. But at this point in time, I don't think the Divas even know what's going on with their championship and with their, their overall matches. <clears throat> the Shield had a six-man elimination match against Team Hell No and John Cena. It came down to a three-on-one, where it was John Cena versus the three members of the Shield. He scored a pin on, on Rollins. Then Roman Reigns got DQ'd. And then he just constantly attacked John Cena. So John Cena defeated the Shield with a pinfall and two DQs. So the Shield as a unit has now lost. And they lost collectively to John Cena. Boo. Now Rollins and Reigns are actually going to take on Team Hell No for the tag team belts. It would be insane to see the next Monday night on Raw, the Shield with three titles. I don't think they could do the Freebird rule that way unless they were to do a super Freebird rule where any of the three could defend the US title and any of the two could defend the tag belts. Which would make for very interesting pairings and very interesting comp competitions. So I'd like to see the Shield win that because I think Team Hell No has really run its course. And it would make sense. During the, the six-man elimination match, Kane got himself eliminated by DQ for using part of the announce table to attack the, the shield. Okay, I can see those two guys breaking up. It, it's horrible, but it makes sense. <clears throat> Mark Henry talked about his strap match with Sheamus. Sheamus came down and they, while still wearing shirts, beat each other with straps. Their match should be brutal. If you saw the photos of Sheamus after what Mark Henry did to him, that match is going to be sick. That match is going to push the limits of, of a PG Extreme Rules. Because if they get busted open from being set up with a strap, those are going to be hard to try to close and hard to try to take care of. So that match will be pretty brutal. Cena, Ryback, you know, at this point in time, I think Ryback has had one pay-per-view victory. And he's done a whole lot of nothing when it comes to his feud with John Cena. I don't think he's going to beat John Cena in a last man standing match, which I think John Cena is undefeated in that match. Unless the shield comes down and lays out John Cena as retribution for John Cena defeating the shield, I just, I just really don't see Ryback becoming the champion. If it's John Cena, he wins pay-per-view matches. Even while injured, fighting three guys, he wins matches. He destroyed the Nexus by himself. You know, if the shield costs him his match against Ryback, he'll destroy the shield, and it's it'll be pointless. You know, great year, almost year-long storyline will be destroyed because John Cena has to rise above everything. And then how do we close the night? <clears throat> Triple H is in the steel cage. Heyman comes down, talks about how Brock doesn't fight for free, which is fine, makes sense. Then Triple H then goes Brock Lesnar to get into the ring. They fight for a little while. Brock with a fantastic German suplex. Triple H hits the bedroom, tosses him out of the ring, through the steel cage door. That is the third match on the pay-per-view for Trimos that I think is interesting, is those two in a, in a cage match. But it needs one thing. It needs to have somebody bleed the old-fashioned way. You know, you can't bounce off the cage the whole time and have nothing happen. If this match gets a little bit, just a little bit of blood, nothing, nothing insane, not like a Ric Flair Hulk Hogan match, just a little bit, just a little trickle. That match and that few will have all the type. If they don't have that, they need to have a match that's even more brutal than the match that they had at WrestleMania. 